Hello, I'm Greg Tidwell. Thank you for joining me for this ongoing study on revival and restoration. This is a study of renewal as found in the scripture as we look at the various ways God worked throughout scripture to bring revival and restoration to his people. Our theme verse for this study, Psalm 85 verse 6, says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? This week, we'll be studying the prophet Jonah. Only four chapters long, the book of Jonah has figured prominently in the imagination of God's people. Perhaps this is because of the fantastic story, the way in which God worked in such a dramatic effort in, God, in Jonah's life calling the prophet, chastising the prophet, delivering the city of Nineveh, we find fantastic creatures, the great sea monster, the uh, mysterious gourd and the, and the worm that come, the wind that beat down, all of these things, instruments of God. Some have believed that the book of Jonah is just a myth. But our Savior himself affirms the reality of Jonah, and so it is best for us to accept this book as the Word of God and to accept it as his account of his working among people. We find one of the great themes of the book is that revival comes in times of crisis. Crisis can be of various sorts. Sometimes a crisis comes because of our own sinfulness, and sometimes because of outer circumstance. But any crisis can be used by God to bring revival. And out of crisis, people often turn to God. We find that the prophet Jonah was a reluctant prophet. The word of the Lord came to Jonah and said, Go preach to Nineveh. But instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah went the opposite direction. He got on a boat and he headed to the far side of the Mediterranean Sea. In the course of this, we find our first crisis. God hurdles a storm. The text is very graphic. It pictures God as, as having a storm that he could just take in his mighty hand and toss at this boat. And the storm was so fierce that the mariners thought they were going to lose the ship, that they would die. And this is the first revival that we find. The mariners, when confronted with this great storm, first of all, the text says, each prayed to his God. But the storm did not abate. And so they found Jonah, who was asleep down in the ship, reminding us of our Savior, who would be sleeping during a storm in, the, in his ministry many centuries later. They found Jonah, and they said, Awake, O sleeper, pray to your God. And then whenever Jonah indicated who he was, that he indeed was a Hebrew, that he worshipped the Lord who made heaven and earth, and that they needed to throw him overboard that they might be saved, the mariners, to their credit, did not want to kill Jonah. But eventually they decided this was indeed the course that they needed to take. They offered a prayer asking God's forgiveness for what they were about to do, and they tossed Jonah overboard. And when that happened, the storm was over, the sea was calm, and the text says that the mariners feared the Lord. In this crisis, these pagans came to faith. In our day, we need to look at people who are in crisis. Not in a manipulative way, but in a helpful way. We should provide for them the opportunity of coming to faith because in the Lord, 
they will find the answers to the great crises of life. We then find sin's consequences sometimes bring revival. How many times do we find people, especially those who are involved in substance abuse or some other besetting sin, that they don't get out of it until they hit rock bottom? Well, I don't know anyone who went further down than Jonah did, for he went down all the way into the belly of the great sea creature. God prepared the sea creature. Now, in the text, it could be described as a whale or a great fish. It's a great sea creature. And whether it was a natural creature that God uh, ordained, or if this was a special creation, it says God prepared. And so this great sea creature was prepared by God to swallow Jonah. That was the consequence for his sin. And in the belly of the whale, Jonah prayed. And in his prayer, God received his contrition. And God commanded the sea creature, and it vomited Jonah up on dry land. So we find that Jonah, in the belly of the whale, turned to God. Revival sometimes will come because of sin's consequences. And God is the God who forgives. He is the God of mercy. And we'll see this in reference to Nineveh. Jonah needed to learn this lesson. And we're going to find that he had a hard time applying it to others. He was in the whale for three days and three nights. How exactly this happened, we don't know. But our Lord himself affirms that this was the case. And so it is, we believe this. Having come out of the whale, the word of the Lord came to Jonah again, and Jonah obeyed. And we're not surprised at that. He did learn that lesson. And it underscores for us that there needs to be obedience, that there needs to be a change. Repentance requires a transformation. And Jonah was transformed. When God told him the second time to go to Nineveh, he went to Nineveh. He preached in Nineveh, yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. This is the entirety of the prophecy of Jonah. Forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Notice we don't find Jonah himself laying out any plan for repentance and restoration, any, any hope for them. The message was just one of dire destruction. And at the preaching of Jonah, Nineveh repents and is spared. From the king all the way down, they humbled themselves before God. And God turned aside from his design to destroy Nineveh. Now, Nineveh would fall much later, but at this time, Nineveh was spared. God's mercy was on display. And we must realize that we have sinned. You and I certainly deserve punishment from God. But God, who is rich in mercy, has forgiven us. And has turned aside his wrath from us. So it is in our nation we find that our society has done so many things contrary to God. But if we humble ourselves, God's wrath can be turned aside. We find, however, that Jonah did not have a very good attitude about this. Even though he had been spared, he did not want Nineveh to be spared. He went outside the city, and he waited to see what would happen. And as he sat out there, God caused a great plant, a gourd plant, to grow over him. And it gave him shade from the sun. And Jonah was very pleased with this plant, but unfortunately it only lasted for a day. And a worm came and ate it, 
and the east wind beat down and vexed Jonah. And he was so angry, he said he could just die. And God used this as an object lesson for him. Jonah 4, verse 10. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? The mercy of God is on display here. As a side note, God not only had mercy upon the people, but upon their livestock. God cares about all of his creatures. The mercy of God is something we should constantly return to because revival is ultimately the work of God. God was the one who called Jonah to himself. God is the one who called the people of Nineveh to repent and forgave them. We need to constantly remember that it is God who is judge. It is God who is merciful. The justice and the mercy of God are the context of revival. We should constantly then be praying. Psalm 85, verse 6, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Thank you for joining me for the study of the prophet Jonah. We'll continue our series on revival and restoration in the next class. Have a great day. We